in this video, I'm going to be giving you the exact roadmap that I have used to rent out both my rental properties so you can have a positive experience renting out your house. So what's been the secret to having a positive experience owning and managing rental properties? You can actually have tenants who pay you on time, they treat the house like it's their own, and they're very respectful. Like anything in life, if you want to be really successful at it, not only do you have to get really educated on the topic, but you got to have a step-by-step -step plan. My goal this year is to be able to break over a thousand subscribers and hopefully motivate and inspire over a thousand people so if by the end of the video you feel that i deserved a subscription go ahead and subscribe for the first part of the video i'm going to be going over some of the most important things that i look for when i'm actually looking for a rental property then i'm going to give you my step-by-step -step marketing plan after that i'm going to talk about everything that i do when the leads are coming in and after that i'm going to explain how i actually show the property the most effective way with the least amount of time spent and if you stick around to the end of the video I'm gonna be giving you guys some bonus tips and tricks that have gotten me amazing results and made the process so much easier all right let's get started one of the most important steps to renting out your property starts right from the very beginning when you're first acquiring the property. Everybody's gonna have their own different investment strategy and for me, what I like to do is I like to look for houses that are not way too expensive or huge, but also not a house that is gonna need a ton of repairs. I personally like to look for something that is almost very close to move-in ready. And some of the most important things that I look for are what are the major big expensive things that can go wrong? What kind of roof does it have? What kind of shingles are they? What's the life left on them? When was it last installed? What kind of plumbing is it? Is it the old cast iron plumbing that's gonna need replacing pretty soon? Actually, probably before you even buy the house. Or is it the new updated PVC plumbing? And for the electrical, I'm looking at the breaker panels. Obviously, I'm not an electrician, but I'm literally just looking for brand new panels, not the old, ugly looking panels. I'm not an AC guy, but when I'm looking at the AC, I'm just looking at something that looks nice, clean, and brand new. I also like the idea of investing in properties that have three bedrooms. I also like to put myself in the renter's shoes. When I step into this property, is it something that I would actually see myself renting? I look for really nice aesthetics. Does it have a nice kitchen? does it have a nice bathroom but you have to be very very careful because if the numbers do not make sense you are going to fail which brings me to my next point you have to make sure that the property is going to cash flow at the very least you want $200 per unit for example let's say all your mortgage and expenses is 1500 bucks you want to be able to charge 1700 bucks at the very least. When I'm looking for a property, I'm looking for $300 to $400 in cash flow. Keep in mind, property taxes go up, so sometimes your payment goes up each year. And there's always other factors that you can't really control, so that's why I always like to shoot for $300 to $400. Obviously, it's pretty tough, but that's what my aim is for. And to be completely transparent, if it wasn't for my parents planning the idea in my head, I probably would have never started. At an early age, I saw that my parents, they lived in a duplex and they would house hack it and what that means is they're basically living in one building that has two separate units and one of those units is rented out and that rent pays for the mortgage so you're able to live for free one of the most important tips that they gave me was this when you're looking for a property do not fall in love with the property you want to be able to look at 50 60 70 different houses because the more houses you look at the better you are going to get at crunching the numbers and knowing your market all right now that you have your property the very first step for you to actually rent it out is going to be to market your property the number one goal here is to post it everywhere so that way you can generate a ton of leads and a ton of people that are interested the bigger the volume and the more work you do here the more people you're going to attract and the quicker you're going to find a qualified tenant you obviously want to have very clear well taken photos you have to post your rental property everywhere post it on apartments.com what they're going to actually do is they're going to post it out on several different websites for you post it on zillow.com post it on realtor.com you can also post it on Craigslist, post it on Facebook Marketplace. Posting your listing is super, super important. But another important step that you cannot skip out on is this. I'm sure you've driven through a neighborhood before and seen the old school for rent signs outside of the properties. You definitely want to make sure that you have one of those. So one of the things that I did that helped me generate a lot more calls, actually 10 to 15 calls every single day, was directing traffic from the main streets. So what I did, there's actually another sign that you can buy. It's a smaller sign. It has an arrow pointing. I'll pop a picture up here on the screen. 
and I basically just posted that sign on the corners of the streets and as well as on the main streets that are exiting the neighborhood to the main streets. I'm getting calls from people that are driving to work and I'm also getting calls from people that were referred by their neighbors because their neighbors saw the signs. But keep in mind, you can have all this traffic, all these people show up, but if you really want them to stick, you have to have a competitive price. Keep in mind when these people are looking at your property, they're also gonna be looking at all the other ones around the area. So if I see another house that's very comparable to mine that's renting out for 1500 bucks, what I like to do is I like to undercut it by 25 or 50 bucks so that way your house seems like a better deal. If you have got value so far from this video, do me a huge favor, drop a comment saying value down below. Before I go on to the next important thing, here's a little bonus. So on this last property that we purchased, it seemed like the owner, when he was selling it, he's probably selling it in a rush because the house had a pretty ugly paint job. So for about a couple weeks, my wife, my family, and I, what we did is we painted the house, we painted the kitchen cabinets, repainted some of the walls, changed out all the doorknobs. The electrical outlets just had paint splatter all over them, so we replaced them with brand new ones. Our main goal here was to have people walk in and have them feel like the place is fresh so now that you have your marketing out of the way you're gonna be getting a ton of calls a ton of messages so what do you actually do with all of the leads this is exactly what I like to do oh yeah and once we get closer to the ending of the video I'm also gonna be going over how I actually collect payment automatically without you actually having to be there okay so this is what I like to do when all the leads and messages are coming in and just this weekend, I actually had to rent out the house and I had to do about 50 showings. I'm not gonna have the time to be able to do 50 showings back to back to back to back. So what I like to do is I like to do my home tours on Sunday between a two to three hour window all at the same time. What this does, it's gonna funnel everybody in at the same time. You're gonna spend less time and everybody else is actually gonna be more incentivized to actually wanna move forward because they're gonna see that other people are actually interested in the property as well. And when I'm getting calls or messages, I'm literally just turning into a robot and I'm saying the same thing every single time. What I like to do is I like to have my notes open. I'll read out a lot of the important details how much the rent is, how much the security deposit is, what I'm looking for as far as rental criteria with the application, how much is the application fee, when I'm available, and towards the end of the call, my goal is to just set up an appointment. So I'll normally tell them something like, unfortunately, I'm only gonna be able to show the house between one to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Is that gonna be able to work for you? A lot of people don't work on Sundays. And after that, I'll simply tell them, awesome so what i'm going to do the day before on the saturday night i'm actually going to send you a text reminder with all the important details like the property address and the time once again the time is getting close for you to do your home tour and you're probably wondering what do i do exactly obviously each and every step is going to be important the home tour being a crucial crucial step and here <coughs> wow Obviously, every step of the process is going to be equally as important. So I would highly suggest that you don't skip out on any steps. So as far as the home tour, here's exactly what I do. Obviously, the day before you're going to send your appointment reminders. I always like to ask for a confirmation. That way we can get a head count. I would recommend getting there about 15 minutes early. And if you're in a situation like I've been, once you get there, there's probably going to be five or six people already there. I like to go up to them and shake their hand, greet them, let them know my name, tell them thank you for stopping by. I'll show them around, I'll just kind of point to the garage, the kitchen, the rooms. I'll tell them to take all the time they need and if they have any questions or wanna complete an application that I'm gonna be either in the garage or at the front of the house, so take all the time they need. These are some of the important documents that I would recommend you to have ready. So number one is I would recommend having a rental application sheet. This is gonna collect a lot of their basic information, such as their name, address, look up. There's a bunch of different templates online. You could look that up uh, to find one that you feel like you feel comfortable using. You also wanna have a criteria sheet outlining all of the criteria that you are going to be looking at and some of the things that will help them qualify. Towards the end of the process, you're obviously gonna need a lease agreement. And one of the most important things that has helped me out tremendously is having a rental criteria sheet. You can literally go on Google, go to Google Images. What this does is it basically creates a point system so that way when you're looking at the application, you can actually grade it and go off of a point system. And if they meet a certain amount of points, then they have met the criteria and therefore they're a qualified applicant and you can move forward with their application. 
this is probably one of the most important steps. So do not, do not, do not skip out on that. If you have any questions on anything that you're going through that's very specific, or if you're trying to look for any documents, one of the best resources that I always like to use is biggerpockets.com. It's a free resource. There's a ton of blog articles on there, and there's a very good chance if you have a specific question, some other investor already asked that question and got that question answered. So I actually just got done showing a property this weekend and one of the things that I found that helped me save a ton of time was instead of having them do the paper application there inside the house, I was handing them out and if they wanted to move forward, I would have them either text me the images or email me the images or come back and drop off the application at a later time. Once that application is completed, then from there, the next step is gonna be the online application. And just a little quick side note, I am just some random guy on YouTube, so take what I say very lightly. I am not saying that this process is gonna 1000% work for you, but it does work for me and it puts me in the best situation. So hopefully this provides some type of value so it makes you feel sorry for me and you hit the like button. Sorry about that, I had to do it. But in all seriousness, if you are enjoying the video so far, I still have so many more tips that I need to go over. Do me a huge favor, hit the like button. Come on, it's completely free. That way YouTube can pick this video up and showcase it to other young entrepreneurs who are also looking to rent out their house. And as a thank you for that, here's a very cute picture of my puppy Binks. Okay, here's some very important bonus tips. I also have a separate bank account. So that way all expenses, all income, funnels in through that one bank account. And the way I look at it is like my rental properties are like their own person. I do not touch that money. That money just stays there. And once it gets to a certain amount, the goal from there invested into more houses. At the very least, you wanna have six months of reserves. So six months of your mortgage payments, just in case if there's a pandemic or if you can't rent out the house or if they leave. I personally like to play it a little bit extra safe. So I have eight months reserves per each property. When you're verifying their information with the previous landlord, you can ask them some of these questions. Are they gonna get their deposit back? Did they ever pay late? How was your experience with them? And most importantly, would you ever rent to them again? You also wanna make sure during the application process, you have some type of information release form that they sign off. That way when you call the employers, if they ask you for this, you could just email it to them. So that way you could verify their income, how long they've been there. And most importantly, if this is a part-time job or a full-time job or a long-term job, not a short-term job. Another really important thing that I like to add on my lease agreement is I like to have a maintenance inspection at random, but I'm always gonna let them know 24 to 48 hours in advance. I also like the idea of having a binder full of business cards for different home improvement contractors. That way, if you have anything that ever gets damaged or broken, you have a ton of different people you can call and follow up with. Also, if the rental application is not approved, it is to my understanding that you do have to let them know. So what I like to do is I like to send them a formal letter via email. I also like the idea of collecting cash upfront for the first month, as well as the security deposit. And then after that, it's all automatic payments done online. Now the software that I use, it's completely free, so it's not gonna charge you anything. The only time it would charge the tenant something, it would be in a very, very rare situation if they were using their credit card. So not a debit card, a credit card, they would get charged a processing fee. The only downside to the software is it does take five to seven business days for it to hit your bank account, which to me, I really don't have a problem with that. So this software was actually one of the softwares that I mentioned earlier. It was one of the websites where you can actually list your property. It's apartments.com. It's amazing and I totally recommend it. And remember guys, we only get one life, so let's make it count, let's make a difference. You can actually make a difference in my life today by doing this. I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy. Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some